Now let us continue to examine evidence and share information that could prove useful in fighting the dog propaganda machine. And tell me there is no propaganda machine. How can people deny the dog cult when there are videos like this circulating, getting millions of views and thousands of likes? This crotch sniffing shit eater is being treated like a god. And no one seems to find this odd or disturbing at all. This is how dogs should be treated? Why exactly? I am proposing a theory that may help to explain many, if not most, pit bull attacks. We know that well-raised, loved, sweet, affectionate, family pit bull type dogs attack innocent people unprovoked every day for seemingly no reason. Usually children or the elderly or anyone who looks weak and like vulnerable prey. If you don't believe me, check out the dogsbite.org website and the National Pitbull Victim Awareness website, as well as um, this link I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share a bunch of links with you in the description. Check them out. Read the triggers that prompt pitbull attacks. Like, have a look at this. It's ridiculous, right? I've talked about this so many times. First, we need to understand that these bred for blood sport mutants are not like other dogs. They were purpose bred to harass and attack animals such as bulls and bite them in the face. They were bred to bait bulls in pits, hence their name. And what is bull baiting? Bull baiting is a blood sport involving pitting a bull against another animal, usually a dog. During bull baiting, the dog would attempt to flatten itself to the ground, creeping as close to the bull as possible, then darting out and attempting to bite the bull in the nose or head area. A variant of bull baiting was known as pinning the bull, where specially trained dogs would set upon the bull one at a time, a successful attack resulting in the dog fastening his teeth strongly to the bull's snout. The extinct Old English Bulldog was bred especially for this sport. I'm getting this information off of Wikipedia, but there are many websites where you can go and pull this information from. If you click on Old English Bulldog, uh, you will learn that despite the laws making dog fighting illegal, the activity continued for many years. Breeders determined a cross between the Old English Bulldog and Old English Terrier created a superior fighting dog with increased quickness and dexterity. This new breed of dog, called the Bull and Terrier, was a precursor to the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, English Bull Terrier, and American Pit Bull Terrier, and accelerated the extinction of the old English Bulldog. Now, these bully dogs retain the instincts of their ancestors, and they display these behaviors which they were bred for. Unlike other breeds, which were not bred for the purpose of baiting bulls and fighting, uh, these dogs, these bully breeds, give no warning signs before they attack. They go for the face. They latch on and they don't let go. They are relentless and they don't give up. This is what they were bred for. It's what they were created to do. Most attacks are completely unprovoked. The dog is often the sweetest, most affectionate dog for many years until it suddenly goes berserk and rips someone's face off. Why? Look at this video of them hanging from the tire. Now, most people think this is adorable and funny. It isn't. It is disturbing and disgusting in the extreme. These muscular chunks of animated meat are instinct-driven, soulless, mutated, biological killing machines. Horrific filth that exist to shred and destroy. Their purpose is to destroy. They have no other purpose than to harass, attack, and destroy, and kill. It comes naturally to them. But people think these dogs are playing when they behave like this. And indeed, they are. And this is what I want to talk about this fine line between playing and fighting. In just about every video I have seen of a pit bull type dog attacking people, the dog always looks as though it is playing. It's wagging its tail, 
It has its tongue hanging out with that, quote, friendly expression on its face. Uh, they, they don't look aggressive. They look like they're having a great time. They look really, really excited. I've commented on this before. Now, I got a message this morning from a viewer. She shared this video with me, the one you're watching right now with this white pit bull type dog running around, looking like it's playing. But look, as soon as that girl gets on the ground, it goes into attack mode. So this viewer wrote, what I see is a dog that isn't displaying predatory aggression at first, but more of a hyper excited play. Hyper dogs play with each other the same way. But when the victim is down, it becomes a typical bull breed style attack. And then she writes, for the life of her, she cannot find the article online which mentioned that in dogs, the line between playing and fighting is thin and easily crossed. That is why dogs engaging in play with each other often, for no reason, start to fight. The article said something about how in the dog's brain, the same areas are active during fighting and during playing. I have been Googling for ages, but can't find it, but I'll keep trying. I have been looking for this article, also have not been able to find it yet. Uh, if I do find it, I'll put the link in the description, but I thought we would talk about this anyway. She recalls reading about how brain chemicals are similar in both situations, or emotional states being similar. Uh, she says that she knows for sure that most bull terrier type breeds are in a hyper aroused state at all times as standard, which explains their behavior matching exactly what this infographic says is a hyper aroused dog. Now look at this. You got the smiling, right? Quote, smiling, grimacing, uh, the panting, the jumping, the mouthing, the over friendliness. Uh, the lipstick showing, in case you're wondering, that's when their red penises stick out of their sheaths or whatever. Absolutely disgusting. I see that almost every time I see a pit bull, its dick is sticking out. Awful. Horrific to see that. It should be illegal just to display that in public. That should be a crime to have a dog and put that on display. It's disgusting. Anyway, she writes that there are also shelter descriptions which match this as well. They'll say things like the dog is too excitable for kids and so on. She says she sees it all the time uh, when she's outside and people are walking their dogs. She says that the dogs are always, always straining against the lead. She's talking about bully breeds here. Uh, and always in a harness so they don't choke themselves. She writes that she has seen many but has never in her life seen a Staffordshire Bull Terrier walk to heel. Like, they're always pulling on the leads. She says, I'm almost certain it's genetic hyper arousal. And this is what I want to explore today. I think she's really onto something. She says she lives in the UK. I live in Canada. I see this all the time as well. Uh, I saw a pit bull walking down the street the other day. The, 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 the mutant looked like it couldn't even walk. It was so deformed but pulling, straining, always in this hyper-aroused state. So she writes that she believes that this hyper-arousal explains many non-predatory pit bull attacks, where the play actually did turn into aggression. Another reason we should not have such animals in our society, their play can turn into aggression so easily and does all the time at dog parks. She says she sees this when she is out uh, and it's really disturbing. What other animal does this? Now, I have owned a couple of dogs in my life. They were not bully breeds, but I can attest to this. I remember roughhousing with the dogs uh, and they would get riled up and become hyper aroused and become more and more aggressive until a line was reached. I remember like saying to myself, okay, it's time to stop now because this dog is getting out of control. She would start to growl and become a lot more aggressive. And I can see how that line between playing and attacking is indeed very thin. How many of you remember this incident it happened not long ago at all? This Connecticut woman was uh, mauled by her four mastiffs, which according to witnesses, according to everyone, had no history of aggression at all, were the sweetest dogs. It's always the case. These dogs were not vicious whatsoever. They were loving family dogs, and they attacked her. Now, it's believed the woman was playing with them. 
prior to the attack. Uh, so playing around with the dogs can lead to you being severely injured and in critical condition. I think this is happening a lot more than we realize. But it's not just playing around with your dog that can get it hyper aroused. I believe that certain dogs are naturally more hyper aroused than other dogs. Look at this video, for example. This is another example of dog nuttery gone wild, absolutely disgusting piece of non-scientific garbage used to manipulate people into believing dogs are wonderful, specifically bully breeds that they are wonderful. What we have here is a woman who's, she's conducting an experiment. She has a number of different breeds of dog lying at this lady's feet. The woman is pretending to cry and they are observing the dogs to see how they will react to her fake crying. Now, the other breeds look kind of nonchalantly over at her. They might come over, give her a sniff, see what's up. But look at this Staffordshire Bull Terrier all up in her face, completely hyper aroused. And they laugh about it. And they think that this is evidence that the dog is loving and has empathy. Can you believe this? I'll put the link in the, in the description so you can see for yourself just how stupid this is. This is another example of these false claims that I've talked about in previous videos. Claiming that the dog has empathy jumping to that conclusion is outrageous. Just because the dog is all jumping up in your face doesn't prove that it has empathy. They say, oh, it can't be curiosity because, well, the way that it's placing its head and the way it's doing, it's got to be empathy. It can't be curiosity. Well, tell me then, what does curiosity look like? What this looks like to me is simply a hyper-aroused dog. These dogs, these bully breeds, have been bred to be hyper aroused. Now I've looked around at a few different websites uh, and I found this one, Understanding Canine Arousal, is an article written by Dr. Emma Hughes. It states that the medical definition of arousal is a state of physiological alertness and readiness for action. Well, is that not a great quality to breed into a dog if you want a dog to bait bulls and fight, of course. You want it to be hyper aroused. And they most definitely are ready and alert, ready for action. Simply put, the article states, this means that when an individual is exposed to a high level of sensory stimulation, their brain is flooded with excitatory chemicals such as adrenaline and cortisol. Now, it seems to me and others that bully breeds or pit bull type dogs do not require a high level of sensory stimulation in order to become hyper aroused. Very minimal stimulation is all that is needed in order for them to become flooded with those excitatory chemicals. I think these fighting dogs were bred to have constant adrenaline pumping through them. Hyper aroused is a word that describes a physiologically aroused state characterized by heightened overexcited reactions and you see this in bully breeds. Look again at the list of triggers that prompt pit bull attacks. We are not talking about high levels of sensory stimulation here. These dogs are becoming hyper aroused by the most mundane activities. Uh, it doesn't take much at all for them to flip their switch and go into that hyper-aroused state, which can then lead them into a state of aggression, into attack mode, because those excitatory chemicals of adrenaline and cortisol, those are the same chemicals that course through your veins when you are in fight or flight mode. Too much arousal, it says, or arousal of an anxious brain can be bad. It has the effect of dulling down the logical, rational part of the cerebral cortex, whilst at the same time ramping up the survival response, or the fight, flight, freeze, and fiddle behaviors. It sends the dog into fight, flight mode. It does not take much at all for the dog, for these bully breeds, to enter the fight or flight state. 
Just the smallest things will set them off. Like fake crying, for example. Other dogs, you saw those dogs. They're all chill about it. Oh, what's that noise, huh? They just look over. That's a more normal response than these amped up, hyper-aroused killing machines they call bully breeds. These dogs are reacting to their environment in an abnormal way. Not to say any dog is normal, but these dogs in particular, they reach a threshold in response to stimulus more easily. It says it right in the article here. This is a doctor writing this. Hyperarousal is a necessary and normal response to a life-threatening situation, but in everyday life it is unnecessary and abnormal. I have not been able to locate any scientific evidence that proves bully breeds attack unprovoked because of their natural state of hyperarousal. This is, like I said, a theory I have. Uh, I have put forth theories in the past. I am not a scientist. I am not an expert. I am just a person who gathers information and thinks critically. And to me, it's common sense. It just makes sense that breeders bred this quality into these blocky headed mutants to make them better suited for the job they were designed to do. So if uh, my viewer locates the article she was talking about, she is looking for it. If and when she finds it, I will post the link in the description. I've said before that uh, my viewers' comments are even better than my content. So I look forward to your contributions. I'm sure you guys will have some great things to say. I'm going to continue researching this. This channel is about getting to the bottom of the problem here that we see with dogs and dog owners. We don't have all the answers. I sure as hell don't have all the answers, but we are searching for the answers. We are trying to figure out what is going on. Uh, we are being lied to by pitbull apologists, by the pitbull lobby. We know that for sure. Uh, and the truth is something that we must work at uncovering and sharing with the world because I believe once the truth is out and once people are made aware of the facts and not all the myths that are being perpetuated, then public opinion will change and these dogs will be banned. The future is dog free, guys. Uh, and I thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.